I recently replaced my Ubuntu server where I had Home Assistant supervised installed with Proxmox. Then I installed Home Assistant in a virtual machine and so far has been working a lot better than when I had the supervised version installed. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to install Proxmox, we're going to do a quick overview of the web interface, and lastly we're going to create a virtual machine and install Home Assistant. So what's Proxmox? The Proxmox Virtual Environment PVE, is an open source platform where you can set up and manage kernel-based virtual machines in Linux containers. It comes with a bare metal installer and it also includes a web-based interface so you can easily create and manage virtual machines and containers from a browser. So what hardware can we use with it? To give you an idea, the machine where I installed Proxmox is an older build where I have an Intel Core i7 and 16 gigabytes of RAM. So I have some power to set up a few VMs. However, you can install Proxmox on almost any computer as long as it supports virtualization. You're just going to be limited on how many VMs you can set up depending on how powerful your hardware is. Alright, to install Proxmox VE, we first need to create a bootable drive. So download the ISO image from the Proxmox website. Then to burn the image to the USB drive, we're going to use Vanilla Etcher. So open it and select the Proxmox image. Then select the USB drive if it wasn't automatically selected. Lastly, click on Flash and give it a minute for the process to finish. Once the bootable USB drive is ready, connect it to the computer where you want to install Proxmox and boot it up. When the welcome screen comes up, select Install Proxmox VE. Press Enter and agree to the license agreement. Now, if you have several drives installed on that machine, Select the drive that you want to install Proxmox. Click on Next and then set up your location and time zone. On the next screen, set up a password to log in into Proxmox and enter your email address. The email address is used by Proxmox to send alert notifications about backup failures and other events. Lastly, we need to set up the network configuration. So enter a hostname, for example, pve.local or something like proxserver.local. Then set up a static IP address so the Proxmox machine always uses the same IP address from the network. Click on Next and give it a minute for the installation to complete. After the installation completes, click on Reboot and remove the USB drive. When Proxmox is fully up, you will receive a welcome screen and at that point you can access the web interface from any computer in your network using http colon forward slash forward slash the static IP address that you set up for Proxmox and port 8006 at the end. When you access the Proxmox web interface for the first time, an alert pops up stating that the connection is not private. The reason for that is because there is no SSL certificate installed, so just click on advance and then proceed. To log in into Proxmox VE, enter root as the username, for the password enter the one that you created during the installation and click on login. Even though Proxmox VE is free to use, there is a subscription plan for IT professionals and businesses. So if there is no subscription set up and no valid subscription pop-up comes up when you log in to the Proxmox web interface. It's annoying but at least we can close it right away and move on. The web interface is separated into several sections. At the top you have the header with shortcuts to create virtual machines and containers. On the left you have the navigation tree containing the data center and the nodes, which are the machines running Proxmox. With Proxmox VE you can have several machines running Proxmox and have them link as nodes to one data center, allowing you to manage all your Proxmox servers and its created VMs and containers for one single location. Below a node, you will have the created VMs, containers, and also the storage. The center of the page has the content panel with status information and configuration options. The bottom of the page has the log panel, where entries for recent tasks are displayed. The first thing that you want to do after installing Proxmox is to upgrade all the installed packages. To do that, select the server, then go to Updates and click on Refresh the no valid subscription pop-up comes up, but just close it and the task to check for updates would start. 
When it finishes, it will show a task error at the end, and it's just because we don't have the subscription to access the enterprise repository. Close the task viewer pop-up, and the page loads the packages that we can upgrade on the free version. Click on upgrade, and a terminal window comes up where you need to type Y, and then enter to proceed with the upgrade. When the process finishes, you can just close the terminal window. All right, so so far we installed Proxmox, went over the initial configuration, and took a quick look at the web interface. Now to set up Home Assistant in a virtual machine, we first need to create a VM in Proxmox, then download the QCAL2 installation file from the Home Assistant website, transfer it to the Proxmox root directory, and then import that file to the VM that we created. Sounds like a lot, but the process is pretty simple. So let's get started. In Proxmox, click on Create VM on the top right. Any virtual machine created will have a unique VM ID number, which could be any number started from 100 and up. Set up a name for the VM, in this case it's going to be Home Assistant, then click on Advanced, and select Start at Boot. Click on Next, and under the OS tab, select Do not use any media. Under the System tab, change the BIOS to OVMF UEFI. For the storage, select Local LVM. And for the machine, select Q35. Next, for the hard disk, leave it as it is because we will change it later when we download the QCAL2 installation file. On the CPU tab, select the number of cores that you want the VM to use. In my case, I use four of my available eight cores, but depending on how many you have available, you want to select at least two cores. For memory, enter the amount of RAM that you would like to use with this VM. With Home Assistant, you want to use at least two gigabytes, and you will need to enter the number in megabytes, which will be 2048. In my case, I added eight gigabytes, and I also set up the minimum memory to one gigabyte. Lastly, on the Network tab, we are going to leave all settings as they are. When we start the VM for the first time, it's going to set up a new MAC address, and it's going to show it on the home network as a separate device from the Proxmox server. Click on Next, and under Config tab, make sure that Start After Created is not selected, and then click on Finish. We can now see the new VM created on the left side below the server. Click on it, then go to Hardware, and we're going to replace the hard disk with the Home Assistant installation file. So go to the Home Assistant website and download the QCAL2 file. Then extract it, and we then need to transfer that file to the Proxmox root directory. To do that, we can use the program called FileZilla. When you open the program, enter the Proxmox IP address on their host, then enter the username and password, and set up the port to 22. Click on Quick Connect, and on the unknown host key pop-up, just click on OK. If this is the first time that you are using this program, on the left side, you have the folders from your computer, and on the right side, you have the folders from the Proxmox server. On the left side, locate the folder where you have the Home Assistant installation file. Then on the right side, which is the Proxmox server, you should already be under the root directory. So drag the Home Assistant QCAL file to that directory. After the transfer completes, Go back into the Proxmox web interface, click on the Proxmox server, and then Shell. To import the Home Assistant installation file to the VM that was created, enter the following. After QM import disk, you need to enter the specific VM ID number for the virtual machine, where you are installing Home Assistant. Then after forward slash root forward slash, you need to enter the specific name for the installation file downloaded from the Home Assistant website. Usually when there are new versions of HasOS, the file name will have the version number at the end. For example, HasOS underscore OVA dash 4.6. So just be very careful with these two things so there are no errors when importing the installation file. Lastly, click on Enter. And when the import finishes, it should show that it was successfully imported as an unused disk. At this point, you can go back into FileZilla and remove the Home Assistant QCAL2 file from the Proxmox root directory. Go back into the Home Assistant VM and then go into Hardware. The unused disk with the installation file will be at the bottom as unused disk 0. Now click on the current hard disk and click on Detach. And on the pop-up, click on Yes. That hard disk would then show up at the bottom 
as on use disk one. Select that disk, then click on remove, and then click on yes. Now the unused disk zero, which is the one with the Home Assistant installation, double click it, and on the pop-up, click on add. The next thing that we need to do is resize the hard disk because as you can see, it only has six gigabytes. So select the disk and then click on resize disk. If you want to have a total of 32 gigabytes, which is the recommended, you need to add the number that you want to increase the current storage. There's already six gigabytes, so add 26 and then click on resize disk. The disk now would have a total size of 32 gigabytes. All right, so we're pretty much done. So we can go ahead and click on start and go into console to verify that the installation is working as expected. The installation can take several minutes. So after a while, on another tab, go to home assistant that local colon 8123 and the home assistant initial configuration will come up. The home assistant VN will show up in the network as a separate device from the Proxmox server. It's going to have its own MAC address which you can then use to set up a static IP address for Home Assistant in your home network. To locate the MAC address, go back into Proxmox, select the Home Assistant VM, then go into Hardware and double click Network Device. If you need to add a USB device to the Home Assistant VM, for example, a Conv2 for ZigBee devices, in the Hardware tab, click on Add at the top and select USB Device. In the pop-up that comes up, select Use USB Vendor Device ID. Then from the drop-down, select the USB device that you would like to make available for Home Assistant. Then click on Add and reboot the Home Assistant VM. When the VM is back online, open Home Assistant, go into Supervisor, then System, Hardware, and the USB device will now show up as available for Home Assistant to use. All right, so Home Assistant is installed. Now you just have to do the initial configuration and add your smart home devices to start using it. If you're new to Home Assistant, you can check out my beginner's guide where I go over the initial configuration, how to add devices, and how to configure remote access. You can find a link for that video in the description below. So I hope that this video helps you get started with Proxmox and get Home Assistant virtualized with no issues. If you guys have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comments below. Like always, thank you for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you in the next video.